Okay, we're just going to record this meeting as well, because I know we put it onto YouTube for people that can't make it. Um, but we are like super excited to have uh, Vic here tonight. Um, he is going to kind of walk us through some marketing stuff for um, our clinics and just kind of all the cool things that we need to kind of be aware of as we um well, where and advantages that we can use as we kind of build out our um, as we build out our yearly plans and kind of what we're doing and it's super exciting time to be able to uh, think about that and focus on at this point because we're getting to the words the end of this year and uh, and as I'm thinking about my year end and this is how I bring things into this program and this the study group is. Okay, as I'm thinking about and planning for my own clinics, and I'm like, okay, this is something that we need to kind of start looking at and and um, helping other office managers figure it out because it just needs to happen. Uh, and so, yeah, I thought October is a great time to start thinking about next year's plan because it usually takes me a while to get my crap together <laughs> um, for planning planning my marketing and what we're going to be doing and and how we're going to um, figure it all out. Uh, and I really appreciate that Vic is here. He's going to give us some expertise and even the sun's in his eyes. <laughs> I know. I'm like trying to, it's like, right. It's right in the, so I don't know, like, do I open my drapes more? But then it's like, it's dark over here. I don't know what's better. What's better to me if I open this one. Okay. A little bit of ambient. I don't know. Yeah. Just we'll to, figure it out. It. The It'll sun will okay. go down eventually. That's right. Yeah. It's yeah. right in the worst possible spot. Right yeah. Now, but but yeah, we're super excited. Uh, Vic owns Lux8 Digital Marketing. He is kind of the one-man show, but he is awesome and we love working with him. And he's actually been um, with us on another summit that we offered as well that was geared towards office managers. And that can be found on our YouTube channel as well if you're wanting to go look at that. But it is a fantastic kind of opportunity um, to kind of get some ideas and some insights um, from someone who does this full time. And that's really, it is as office manager, you're not expected to know everything, but we might have to kind of play a jack of all trades type role sometimes because of finances in the clinic or where we're at. And so this is kind of, kind of figuring out where we can use our best advantage and maybe where another company can pick up for us um, or we can make some more money until another company can pick up some more um, jobs for us and we can kind of push that off onto something else which will be good um, yeah so I'm gonna like turn the time over to Vic and uh, thank you so much for being here and I'll let you kind of take it on from here Sure. Yeah. Thanks. No, I, uh, I appreciate the invite and uh, appreciate the audience. This is not something that I do normally, so it's a little, uh, a little weird, but, um, but uh, it's good. It's good. It's uh, social media is one of those things where um, there's kind of like two polarizing views on it. Like people either think that it's like the all or nothing make or break, or they just like feel like it's just a waste of time for millennials to pass the time and like it doesn't really belong uh in kind of the, the dental clinic business world but i think there's a happy medium somewhere in between um and uh just a little background sort of on me and how i kind of all, all got started so um my dad uh, is actually a dentist and my mom is the office manager so uh growing up around the dinner table was always dental type discussions uh so oh speaker's not working Oh, she can't hear. She can't hear right. us. Or I'll text can't. her. I'll, I'll okay. see what she's going on. Okay. Um, so anyway, uh, couldn't escape dental to save my life, basically. So my my wife is a dental assistant. My best friend uh, married a dentist. Uh, my sister in law is a dental assistant. It's just uh, my my life is plagued plagued by dentistry everywhere I go. Um, but it ended up being a bit of a good thing because uh, I just kind of fell into this role by trying to help out my parents when um, their clinic was just kind of at a bit of a crossroads and they weren't sure what they wanted to do and they had no digital presence whatsoever. Um, so I just started injecting myself into different areas of their, uh, of their business. And um, I have a bit of a, uh, I guess, a natural tendency towards marketing. I also took it in, in, in school, uh, but uh, it almost doesn't matter at this point because everything that I learned in marketing then. So, like, so when I took marketing in college, there was no, like, I got my first Facebook account in college. So like the landscape for what marketing is has changed so much in like the last five years, let alone 10, 12, 15 years. So, um, 
dentistry always kind of lags a little bit behind too, generally speaking from like, I don't know, let's say Reebok or Nike or Cheetos. Uh, they're always kind of more on the kind of the cutting edge and then small business kind of, kind of lags in behind there somewhere. And then somewhere way down the line, dentistry, <laughs> kind of like then dentistry gets on board. So they're definitely not early adopters. Um, so, but everyone now kind of at this point understands that social media is a piece of the puzzle when it comes to your business and um, the general operations of a clinic. And you kind of know it because if you're not doing it, you kind of feel like pang of guilt. Like, you oh, like I should have, like we should have, we should have done that. Like we should have done something. We should have posted something this week or I don't know, we should have asked that person to leave a review or like whatever it is, you, you understand internally that there's a va inherent value in it now, um, which is, which is good. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah I, I find, I Go find ahead. in our clinic alone, like, so I manage the clinic that I work at the specialty clinic and I, it, I find even, I had to set a calendar date <laughs> for sure. myself yeah. and an alarm on my phone. And I'm like, Oh, do your Instagram post yeah. <laughs> because like I just get going at work and I head down yeah. and then the week goes by and I'm like, Oh, I didn't do anything on social media. And like, I should know better, but I, yeah, I, it's, it's sometimes just kind of the last thing to do, even though it's, it's fun and different. I just, yeah, it's like the last thing on my list sometimes. So I have to make it the first thing on my list sometimes. But I mean, you can get bogged down too, because there's always something more important that you could do because you can kind of do it whenever, like there's no urgency to it right? There's not, it's not like, Ooh, I got to get this contract away or, or I got to solve this problem with the staff or like wh wh whatever it is. It's not that it's not, it you don't see tomorrow. like an immediate ROI from it or return on investment. That's the problem with marketing or, and why it's like yes. difficult to stay on top of because you don't see an immediate um, return sure. on it. But not even just the return side too. There's also, you don't even see the immediate pain point by neglecting it yeah, either. That's right. True. Whereas that's like, true. if you don't solve the squabble, between assistants at work tomorrow, like <laughs> you're going to have a problem like that afternoon. Right. So, um, there's the, you're like, you kind of need to be pushed by the pain and pulled, pulled by the pleasure and like social media and marketing doesn't really have strong enough of those in any sense, because it's always, um, a delayed gratification or delayed pinch point. So, um, yeah, so it does get put to the back burner. Um, but here, I should share my screen because I've got uh, a bit of my presentation here to keep me on topic because I tend to ramble. Welcome to the club. <laughs> I know. Gift of gab. Is it coming? Yeah, it just takes a minute sometimes. It's All really... right. There we go. So beam right in my... You know what? It's just going to... We're just going to have to live with it. It's just... It is what it is. It'll be okay. <laughs> Okay, so social media strategy for the modern dental clinic. So um, I was going to have this up while I told you who I am, but uh, but here it is anyway. Um, this is a little, uh, actually, it's a little image of one of our clinics that we manage, uh, DSG, which most people are uh, familiar with. Um, and so uh, just an idea of kind of what, what we all do. So on social media side, we basically build uh, like your, your kind of general shingle here that you see with all the different things and the, uh, stories and that kind of thing, of course, posts. Um, and, uh, I think we do a pretty good, a pretty good job overall aesthetic, that kind of thing. Um, just cause we do it though, doesn't mean that you can't duplicate a lot of these things on your own. If you have the time and inclination, um, I mean, you might not be able to, to do it. Um, maybe, you, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but I mean, that's, that's for you to decide. Um, but this is kind of the general, gist of what, what we kind of try to provide for people uh, if you just kind of showed up at their at their page. So uh, social media is uh, a little different now than it used to be, not drastically in the sense of um, uh, what you actually are, are, are doing on it, but the uh, benefits that kind of come about it. And then also too, there's some preconceived notions about what those benefits are um, or just kind of your, your overall assumptions about social media. Social media is really just the current state of the internet. And whether you like it or not, the current state of the internet involves people spending time on social platforms. So Facebook, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat. Uh, these are all places where people spend uh, a large amount of time. Um, and an increasingly larger amount of time 
the younger in the generational uh, sort of landscape you look. So um, as new uh, potential patients, parents, family members, whatever are, are aging up, those people are already engaging with social platforms more than let's say your 55, 60 year old uh, patient. So it's something to pay attention to because it might not be important now, um, but as, as we move forward, um, it's gonna become increasingly uh, more so. Let's see if we can skip ahead here. There we go. So uh, in my experience, there are typically two different kinds of people when it comes to having a conversation about social media. Um, generally, one of these groups of people falls in the category of uh, manager and the other category falls into under the, the, the title of, of, of doctor or dentist. Um, and generally speaking, we have optimistic and kind of pessimistic people when it comes to social media. Um, so, so managers, and I mean, this is not, this is a, this is a, a broad strokes and I'm, I'm probably unjustly painting someone with a brush that they didn't deserve, but, um, they tend to be optimistic about, uh, social media. Um, so things that I hear a lot, um, are just that like, we, we didn't get enough likes on this post or like no one shared it. Um, I thought that there would be like more, more people should be reaching out to us. Like, uh, you know, we need people sending us messages to like book appointments or, all those kinds of things. Um, they also are under this idea that they're going to expose the clinic to all, all, all these different kind of walks of life and groups of people um, as if Instagram and Facebook were uh, like general posting was an ad, but it doesn't really work that way um, as far as uh, what, what actually kind of comes about. So these are some of the, the, the isms, I guess, uh, for the, what was I hand pointing? It's mirrored. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can't reach far enough. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, so these are the, the, the general isms that we kind of come across. Um, and then the reality is a little more grim, unfortunately, for a, a lot of the time uh, for the optimistic people. So instead of clinic exposure being the primary objective, direct clinic exposure is going to be much more minor than you're anticipating. Um, a lot of people think you're going to be getting all these new patients, but really patient retention is the primary value driver. Um, because, uh, well, we can get into that a, a little bit more. And then uh, likes being kind of held in, as this super important um, metric for success uh, within the social media platform. Uh, but in reality, uh, what I like to call retail referrals are king. So rather than a uh, like more of a, a B2B referral, so coming from other clinics, so whether you're a specialty clinic or just you don't want to handle whatever it is, um, and you get a, a referral through... Uh, through another clinic, retail referrals happen uh, when people kind of tag you in social media communities, forums, discussion groups, that sort of thing. Um, and that's the real kind of like gold standard for where value comes from, from social media. Um, because the, the, uh, the whole thing is in the shape of a funnel. So you've got um, you, you kind of gen general awareness that you get. Uh, so the, sorry, the funnel, I, I, I'm going off on tangent. So the funnel, uh, refers to kind of the new patient journey, let's say. So there's an initial kind of brand awareness, which is the very top of the funnel, catches a, a, a wide a wide swath of individuals. Um, and on their journey, they need to discover you in a few different places before they end up making a decision to actually like make you a part of their uh, clinic decision. Yeah, there's um, a bunch of experiences and then there's a call to action and that's at yes. the bottom of the funnel. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So everyone kind of thinks that like, oh, we're going to put up this post and then we're going to get new patients because we're like, well, no, that's not, that's not how it works. Like it would be nice, but just, it just isn't unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, so the very bottom of that funnel is usually your website where you actually like capture people and they make the final decision. But along the way, one of those exposure uh, kind of brackets up at the top of the funnel is uh, a referral. So someone on, so for example, I live in Short Park. Uh, my wife is on the Short Park Moms community. <laughs> and honestly, the Short Park's mom, Moms community, they run the economy in Short Park. Like Strathcona County is <laughs> built on this thing. It's so, it's true though. It's yeah. like they, it, so if, they ha if they're happy with something, you're going to hear about it. If they're unhappy with something, you are definitely going to hear about it. So, so I live in Wetaskiwin and they have a rant and rave. There you go. Yeah. And that literally decides where you should shop, who, yeah. who you should buy your stuff from, what hairdresser you should go to. It's yes. like, yeah, it's, it's intense. For sure. And so if people have a positive experience with your clinic, 
that's where the bulk of the, of the value comes through in social media because satisfied patients are going to recommend you when that kind of comes up. People ask, hey, um, I don't know, I knocked a tooth out in hockey or my kid has a, my kid's tooth hurts on the left side or whatever. And they ask in these forms and then you get tagged. So you need to be taggable for starters so that rather than searching, because people are, are lazy, convenience is, is just the way of the world. So somebody doesn't want to Google your clinic, copy the URL, go back to Facebook, and then paste the URL into the comment section. They want to be able to tag you right then and there in the comment section and say, this is what it is. Blah, 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 yes. blah. Yeah, yep. exactly. So yep. if that doesn't come up for them, uh, you already lost that potential patient or series of patients because there's a lot of silent majority in these forums that wait for the loud mouths or well, maybe I shouldn't, but <laughs> the loud mouths to, to ask an answer. And then the silent majority is just kind of voyeuring in the background, looking at all these recommendations and the ones that kind of get more likes or engagement is something that they would go through. So when they click on it and then they are directed to your uh, account, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, um, you want to show as much as you can about who you are, uh, what's important to you, um, what it's like to be a patient there. That's where the real value comes from because you've just influenced their decision and and whether or not they'd like to kind of move forward. With this you. is kind of like, I think, I feel like this is kind of like the new age word of mouth because 100%. word of mouth we all know is the absolute 100% best way to yeah. market that out there. Because when someone said, Hey, my friend, this is the dentist I see. You should go yeah. see them because of this, 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 and this, then yes. they're going to go, Oh, this person knows and gets me. I'm yep. going to trust them and go to that dentist. Right. And so like, this is like a good way because, and, and this is literally partly and what you're saying this, I love it because Wetaskiwin is a very small town and I worked at a dental clinic here and there's like yep. five dental clinics and they're yep. very competitive towards each other. Sure. Even those are slew of people here to pull <laughs> from. Yeah. They're very competitive towards each other. And that's literally how I built the clinic was I was a member on every single one of those rant and there's like five rent and race pages, but one's really big and the other ones are kind of small, but I was mm -hmm. on all of them. And anytime someone said anything angry about us, I would literally go on there like, oh, I'm so sorry you had a bad experience. Hey, give me a call at the clinic. I'd love to chat about what happened yes. there. And it just makes it look so much better. 100%. And then also when people are like, oh, you whatever, all these things. And because it was my personal account and not the account from the clinic, <laughs> I was able to go and be like, oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you had a good experience at the clinic. Right. Because if it's not coming from the clinic, then it's yeah. not an infringement on the marketing. But if it's coming from me, the office manager, and I'm a member of this community, it was a way to build up the clinic. And then all those relationships got built. And then it just became the clinic name took over. Oh, go right. to this clinic. Oh, go to this clinic. And it didn't matter about me, but that's how we built it in the beginning. Yeah. It was kind of actively engaging this. And then obviously it got massive and I would pass that task down on to someone else, but like, yeah, and, yeah, and they, yeah. that's part of their job was right. to Engagement go on and Facebook yep. and make sure that no one said anything bad about us on those pages. And then, then it would just get So when you're talking about the loophole, uh, I'm assuming you're talking about how like the ADNC doesn't really like addressing reviews and concerns is that what you're yeah because yeah. you technically can't as the clinic acknowledge if they're a patient because of HIPAA right so yeah. but but as the office manager I'm technically not in my own private Facebook right. account I would do that on my own and they also so. don't really like and I don't I don't agree with this and so when we approach this gray area often depending upon the comfortability of the clinic but um they they have also now said that they don't want you to the clinic to even engage with reviews period because mm -hmm. it adds credibility whether it's a overwhelmingly positive review or not so it may yeah. make you appear like um you're better than you are because this glowing review yes. um in my opinion personally i think that's extremely it's actually like sort of antithetical to the whole point of the ada and c it's supposed to be preserving the profession and 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 being accountable should be paramount when it comes to running an ethical business so it kind of flies in the face of what i think they should be about but that's a whole other discussion 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's kind of your loophole as if it's a private account saying, right. Oh, Hey, like I'm reaching out to you. I work at the clinic. I'd like to address this. Please call the office. That's um, a good tip. You know what? I actually yeah. hadn't considered that. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. And it is like, a, it is a loophole. It's a definitely a gray area and I used it and that's how we built that clinic. And now it, it's gotten so big that that clinic doesn't really need someone to maintain that because if someone has an issue, there's enough people all going, well, I'm, I'm sorry, you had a bad experience there. That's back weird. For you. Yeah. Yeah, 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 they, yeah. They do yeah, it. Right. Yeah, Cause yeah. they, they also know that you should call them because they'll address right. it. Did you call yeah. and talk to them? Because they're really good at addressing things like that. Yeah. And so then they're like, Oh, okay. And then that person can't say much about it. So yeah. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So it's good. It's like the sense of community, like that is where community kind of happens now, whether, whether you like it or not, you can't avoid the fact that that's just what it is. We just took our neighborhood and put it on the internet. That's all we did. You're that's absolutely all we right. Did. Yes, 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 yeah. definitely. Um, okay. So this is uh, sort of the optimistic side it tends to be uh, more of a manager. Um, and then on the pessimistic side, this tends to be the doctors. So um, I'm sorry if there are any doctors in here, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you tend to be a little more pragmatic and uh, you're all weird. You might not know it, but you're weird. My weird just matches your weird, which is why I can say that, I think, because I was raised by one of you weirdos. But <laughs> um, uh, a lot of times the clinicians are not directly plugged into the zeitgeist of what might be going on in in society as a whole for let's say regular people uh, and, and and not to be saying that you're detached from reality that's not what i mean but um sometimes being so smart <laughs> is like <laughs> is, is like it, it, it like so the biggest thing that we get is that no one's really on social media i'm barely on social media it's like well that's just you you i know you feel that way but it's not representative of the world at large. Yeah. And that's the thing is we have to remember too. And and I come across this with dentists a lot and, and I love dentists. Otherwise I wouldn't be in this business. Of course. But, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The thing is, is they sometimes forget that this circle that they live in right. is not congruent with the circle that everyone else lives in. Yes. And, and, and it is very purposeful that they keep their circle small totally. because of HIPAA, because of people reaching out to them and taking over their lives and they need a break from people having to deal with this and then deal with the millimeters of stress yes. of like, it's just, it's a lot. And so then they sometimes forget that that kind of scope that they live in is not what everyone else is in. Cause like, I can tell you right now that most of the people that work for them are on social media all the right. time, right. but yeah, because they're not on it. They sometimes forget that Yes. That's and dentists it. typically also exist within uh, echo chambers to agree, a degree too, uh, for the same reasons on purpose, right? Because yeah. um, y- you want to socialize with people who are of a, of a similar mindset uh, to you and you don't want to be judged for what you do uh, for a profession. Like I know my dad all the time, whenever someone would ask what he would do, he would lie a lot of the time. Uh, if we were on vacation somewhere or something like that, because if he said dentist, they immediately thought that he was just like, uh, like ridiculously wealthy and that uh, somehow he owed them something or, or they, they st- want them to start looking at their teeth. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's gross. It's gross. So, so yeah. So it's a defense mechanism and it's an, it's an appropriate one. And I have no judgment on, uh, you know, for, for why that is, but you have to recognize that that might be going on for you. I'm not saying that it is, <laughs> but, but if, but if it is, you need to have a little bit of introspection and, and see what might be the case. So, um, so some common things that we run up against are no one's really on socials, uh, cause I don't use them. Um, no one wants to follow a dental clinic. Uh, we don't have time because we're too busy doing dentistry to make posts or, or deal in comments. Um, and that no one will notice if we don't post anything anyway. So like, you know, what, what's, what's, what does it really matter? Um, and then the counters to all that in, in reality is, uh, the average person spends 145 minutes a day on socials and this is population at large. So I think it's like 3.8 billion people are on social media. So, um, when you consider how much time the older generations don't spend balanced out by how much the younger generations do and who your future patient's going to be, it's not something that you can ignore. If 145 is the average across those two huge spans, uh, 
it's frightening. Like it's, it's, it's insane. The amount of time people spend five hours a day on their phone. Right. Yeah. And, and two to three of them are probably on social media. Right. Oh, at so least. at least, so, um, I know. So when, when Apple came out with, um, the, uh, weekly screen, screen time report average, right. I was like, woof, is this really what I spend on my phone? And then you yeah. can see the breakdown of what you spend it on. You're like, wow, this is just insane. But it's the truth. It's just, you can't argue with it. It's the way that it is. Um, so people are on their phones. You might not be, but population at scale is definitely on their phones. No one wants to follow a dental clinic. Unfortunately, <laughs> this, is, this is true. It's not, it's not girls in bikinis. It's not really beautiful looking food. It's not workout routines. Uh, it's dentistry. It's interesting to a select few. Um, so as far as it being like really interesting to people, um, it's a real small subsect of the population that you're going to grab. Um, the people that you're going to grab are the people who know you, like you, and are interested in keeping up with you on a personal level. Um, we don't have time because we're too busy doing dentistry. Um, it's a, again, this is something with a little bit of forethought you can overcome. Whether that forethought is, um, you know, having, having someone in the clinic do it as a part of their scheduled, uh, you know, routine on the week. It's like, Hey, Friday morning, uh, we, we build out posts for next week or whatever. Um, or whether it's hiring an agency to handle it for you, either way, a little bit of premeditation can kind of put you, uh, on track. Oh, and then I'm, uh, so then uh, just a little, a little tongue in cheek, but, uh, you're right. No one will notice your clinic if you're not posting. So it's, uh, it might be a problem right now, but it's something that will catch up with you eventually over time, uh, just based on the direction of the world uh, right now, um, if it hasn't already. So I'll put my little face back down here. Um, so the true value of social media is uh, a few different things. And it's, and it's, again, it's different than people kind of expect. And I, we touched on this a little bit kind of before in our little bit of back and forth, but um, communicating your, your brand. So having a clear, having people have a clear understanding of who you are, what you're all about, what it's like to come to the clinic, um, you know, what sort of people go there, all those kinds of things, a blend of, um, you know, interesting information and things happening in the clinic and personal, uh, you know, well, for example, and I'm, you know, Citadel Dental is one of our clients. She's a case study in, in how to run a perfect social media presence. So she's got a really nice blend. I mean, here's a picture of her and her husband. People want to see that. They want to know that you're a human being for so long. Um, dentists have kind of been put uh, like up and away as he's kind of like, well, because they isolate themselves to a degree for all the reasons that we discussed earlier um, as sort of these uh, ethereal like animals in the wild that you just never really get to know. Then they're, they're very professional and they don't let you in only to a certain degree, but you don't have to be, you can be fun. You can, you can be, you can be whatever you are. Just have that be represented properly on the internet. You don't, you don't have to push it any one way or the other, but, um, but communicating your brand and displaying your culture are just like super, super um, powerful. And that's, that's the, the real inherent value that comes through, uh, through the socials. And then patient referrals, we touched on that um, patient retention. So, um, you know, patients maybe are, you know, on their phone and, and, and browsing around and whatever, and then they see something of you that they like, and they draw more of a personal connection to you because they see your face on the internet or they see something about you on the internet and they feel like they know you um, just that little bit more that builds that little extra loyalty between appointments where they might have an opportunity to go somewhere else. And um, so hanging on to existing patients is a really good tool here um, and a better one to focus on than like, then thinking you're going to get all these new patients. And then a potential for decreased regular uh, intervals. So uh, maybe they'll move up their appointment a little bit. Uh, maybe not on the books because they don't have an appointment on the books yet. But in their mind, they think about, oh, yeah, shit, I got to make that appointment. Like, I got I to gotta go. I got to go get this whatever done. All right. I should have cleaned my, my teeth are fuzzy. You're like, I don't know. Pick a problem. Well, here's the thing that happens, too, I've noticed is um, and just from marketing kind of projects that I've implemented and I'm sure they're very very rudimentary compared to what you do but um where we know like okay so October we start thinking about year end which means we need to get patients in before the year end so that we can get yeah. them to use their insurance all that kind of stuff and so yeah. 
things that we do is we'll send like a a marketing blast out to all of the patients being like, Hey, listen, it's getting close to your end. If you're planning on this, we're, you know, it takes about three weeks to get your crown done. It takes about, you know, two weeks to pre all things, blah, blah, blah. And we just give them a few timelines and then, and then we blast it out on social media a few times. And then it's just like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's seen this email. Oh yeah. It's on my Instagram. Oh yeah. I seen that on Facebook yes. and all of a sudden they're like, okay, yes. I'm going to call the clinic. It's just like those impressions. I don't know yeah. they're actually called impressions, but I mean, like it's literally a mental impression. And, and that's why I like, I don't know if you remember in like the nineties, they had like the, maybe you don't know the nineties, maybe. I know the nineties pretty good. <laughs> like, I, I am old. So, but you I know, mean, you like, can't be that old. They had commercials on TV real quick. Wait, uh, yeah, what? Um, wasn't streaming. So they had commercials and they couldn't play commercials back to back, right? Because the CRTC or whatever it's called said it was like brainwashing because it is marketing and you can't have so many within a 30 minute period or a one hour period or whatever. You can't have the same marketing thing because it literally sticks in your brain and implants the idea yeah. to then purchase or engage or have actionable um, yes. recourse for that. And it's the same thing in marketing. Uh, and that's like these little impressions. It's like, it's not going to get you on the first try, but if you, if you're influenced in a bunch of different ways, you're likely to get that patient yes. attention. You're likely to get that extra call. You're more likely than somebody who didn't do those things. Yes. For exactly. sure. Right. And so it's sometimes doing that, just that little extra bit that like makes all, all the difference. Right. So, uh, yeah, the more, the more times you show up with, like I said, on an email blast and then they see your post and like, you know, all these different sort of areas, um, it, it, it adds up as a part of a, a cog in a wheel, um, to a, the overall functioning machine. So yeah, a hundred percent. You're totally right. Having it be a piece of the puzzle is kind of really key. Um, and, and, and unfortunately it ends up being a bit of a main, maintenance item, um, a lot of the time. Um, because it gets viewed that way, because it's not like you, you make a post and then you get that instant gratification of like, Hey, well, we got three patients from that post. And, um, or what are we paying our marketing guy for all these posts? Like, I don't, I don't see those patients, you know, directly. And like, you're right. You don't, but when it all fits together and works nicely, that's when you see that growth. When you, when you kind of have everything fitting together nicely, that's the, that's the goal, man. So, um, Next one. Also, I'm just going to move this. I got a beam in my face again. Sorry, everybody. Now it's too dark in here. There we go. The sun's going down. I don't have to have my drape shut anymore. Okay, so um, how to do it. So there's a few tools that you can do that you kind of have at your disposal that you might not know. And some of them might not be as expensive or costly as uh, as, as you think. Definitely on the on the higher end of things is having uh, like an agency like ourselves or like or any or any agency really take care of it for you. It's definitely expensive. Um, is it worth it? I think so. But, um, <laughs> but maybe just a little, just a little bit, tiny bit biased, but it's, uh, it's expensive. If a clinic is in a rough spot, um, should that be where you put all your money? No, definitely, definitely not. Um, but it still needs to get addressed. And if that's the case, then it needs to be addressed in, in house for sure. So, um, there are a lot of tools at your disposal. Some of them you can just have on your phone. Others are desktop uh, versions. We have a version as well uh, that fits within, that's like $40 a month or something like that for a social posting tool where you can uh, build out all your posts uh, ahead of time and schedule them across, as, I don't know, pick a time span, a month, uh, two months, whatever. I mean, I don't recommend doing more than a month just to remain like relevant with like current events or whatever might be going on. Um, but you can, you can, you can set these kind of dates and, and build up posts and plan ahead. And, um, and then it's kind of on autopilot. You might want to do a few, uh, posts here and there uh, off the cuff that just, you know, makes sense because something cool will happen to the clinic or, um, something changed in the landscape of the world where like you need to address some sort of a issue or there's a COVID update or like whatever. Right. So all those things are, are, are extra, but at least you have the, the, the background established where so you don't have to feel guilty about not posting because you did the legwork ahead of time, everything's scheduled and ready to go. Um, another obviously thing is to assign the tasks. So uh, managers wear a lot of hats, um, but we have a few clinics where like a Stereo Center person is looking to pick up a couple extra hours. They might not be the right person for the job. I can't say that for sure, but but it's worth, it's worth finding out. I mean, maybe that's not the route for you, but it could be for somebody. And, um, 
maybe they could take it on and that could be part of their regular routine. Um, so uh, doing a little bit of premeditation there is a really good idea. Uh, accessory patient bases. So does your demographic skew older? Does it skew younger? Where do you really want to be spending the time on these platforms in a, in a bigger way? Facebook now has aged up drastically. Everybody from like 12 years old up to 93 or whatever has some, there's, you know, they're represented there in, in the meta. So you need to know who you're going after and where they're spending their time. So even like myself, I'm a millennial. I'm not on Facebook very much, almost not at all. I basically go on Facebook to clear my notifications and because I have to for work. <laughs> so, but, um, but I'm also a, a 33 year old male. So I'm not, I'm not on Sherbrooke's mom's communities. I tried to get in. No one let me. So, so, uh, you know, so there's different communities that are in different areas. Is your patient base largely uh, families and, and, and mothers of families? Cause realistically mothers make the decisions for families when it comes to health uh, for actually for just about everything. <laughs> but, uh, but specifically there, they're in charge. They're the ones making the choice. So you need to find out where those people are and then market to them. Are you in a more up and coming younger area where you should be focusing on something like TikTok? So like the example here that I have in the image is uh, probably the most popular dentist on any social media platform at anywhere. He's got 10 and a half million followers. Like, is there even a small chance that his clinic is not busy as hell? Like there's just no way he's, probably so overwhelmed with patient flow. He's booked out six months or something. I, I, I guarantee you that this guy is doing just fine. And uh, so he skews quite a bit younger, but TikTok is one of those things that's kind of an up and up and coming platform that more and more people, it is again, aging up, all these platforms age up as time goes on. So Facebook started with college kids, literally, that's where it was built. And now it's 92 year old people. Um, TikTok started with tweens and uh, now here I am, a, a, a middle millennial and, and, I, and I'm there with a thriving account. <laughs> there's, there's people like seniors that are on there too. Oh yeah. And, oh, and yeah. they're like, they're rocking it. Like it is so sure. fun to watch. Them. <laughs> totally. Well, and TikTok's really fun too. So unfortunately from my perspective, it hasn't been something that I've been able to figure out how to deliver to a clinic in a way that is economical and ongoing and I have, haven't, we haven't figured it out yet, but, but maybe we'll get there. But um, it is by far, if you're going after a younger generation, like this is where you need to be spending your time. The organic reach on posts is astounding. The amount of money you don't have to spend if you're willing to do stuff in house uh, to access people within your area is just insane. And it's so easy. Like yeah. it is, so easy like it's ridiculously easy to do yes. things and I'm not like a I don't make funny videos or whatever but like I can do it and it gets yep. so easy it's and it takes like 10 seconds it's super fun even if you just get on there and you just have me like a couple people in the morning good morning and there's just music in the background and then it's yeah. posted and it's done and yeah it's super easy you could also be copying trends like there's trends that go around that everyone does you could be copying trends you could also be uh like duetting i don't know if anyone's if you, if you don't have tiktok you need to download it if you're listening to this if you made it this far and you're just like you're sitting here listening you should be on tiktok in one way or another just and start to consuming. look at it just yep. to look at it yeah don't post anything it. But, just but also consume. this is also a warning when you start consuming. <laughs> yeah. Six hours will go by and you're like, what? Yeah. What and happened? if you have ADHD, it's just oh, going to make yeah. it way worse. Way so, worse. So set a timer. Yeah. Not on your phone. Set a timer where you have to like go turn it off, physically put your phone down because it's TikTok does that now for you because people rabbit hole for too long. Yeah, I know. I've done it. Yeah. Like, before you know, yeah. it's 2 a.m. And you're oh, like, yeah. I can just watch another video. So, yeah, just one yeah. more. Just one more. Yeah. So, but I mean, there's lots of things. So because there's so much content out there, you could, there's like reaction videos are a really big thing. So this dentist on here, for example, half the time he's reacting to uh, dental videos or people with dental questions or whatever it is. And he's just describing what's happening. And um, that can be really powerful if you're comfortable in front of a camera. Like, that's great. That's, that's, even if you aren't comfortable in front of a camera, procedural videos are their own, assuming that you have consent of the patient, but 
procedural videos are, there's a huge, it's like a pimple popper thing, right? People want to see just like big chunks of scale coming off, right? Like they, they like that grody. There's like a weird subsect of humanity that just likes to be disgusted and then no, it's not their teeth. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's a variety of different ways you, could, you can, you can go about it, but if you aren't on TikTok, you should be, um, at least to just consume and see what it's all about because, uh, the spread. So the way that TikTok, well, the algorithm is always changing for starters, but the way that it generally works is that it pushes it out locally first, which is really, really important, especially for small business. Like that's a free ad campaign with a geo fence around it. So, um, yeah, it's the, it's the way, it's the way to go. If you have just like the smallest bit of, and the other thing too, so versus Instagram, like everyone knows about like an Instagram model or Instagram influencer or whatever, and everything is perfect and polished and beautiful and lovely and the best version of their life. And, and TikTok is the opposite. It is raw, gritty, gross, and uh, real. And so because of that real aspect, you can just do stuff off the cuff uh, in the moment with less production value. You don't have to be uh, Christopher Nolan or Scorsese or anything to like put together a nice video. And just make it just you filming whatever it is that it is. And uh, yeah, so super powerful. So yeah. Um, Assess where your patient base is. Maybe they're younger. Maybe you should be spending some time on TikTok. Maybe they're more professional. You should be on LinkedIn more. Maybe, you know, you should be addressing all of these things, but like, where do you put the bulk of your, of your attention? Um, and then we talked about uh, authenticity a little bit. Uh, just, well, I guess that was the, the other chat that we had, but making, making real content that's actually you, not, not some blog post from, uh, I don't know, just a random writer that doesn't have anything to do with the clinic like real content photos of you re real uh, reviews that you have or um just anything real anything you think of that's real if you want to put a little polish on it that's fine that's it's all good if it contributes to the brand but um being real lots of people want to see more and more now um engaging with your community obviously we talked about this and how powerful that is that's a huge 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 uh aspect of what social media actually is um and then pay attention to accounts that are killing it like are you going to be the next the bentist here, like on the image? Pro probably not. But could you have ten thousand followers? Yeah, for sure you could. I think there's a clinic in Edmonton that has like a tremendous amount of followers, and they yeah. just keep building and building and building and growing. And their marketing is like amazing. Yeah. And it, but I mean, started like five six years ago, and they push, they push yeah. their marketing like crazy, and it 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 can be done. It yeah, just, of course. It requires a lot of work and effort, but it can be done. And they, they, yeah, they mimic things, other things in the states, and they, yeah, like it's good. It's pretty fun. Oh, is that a hand on purpose? Yeah, Britt, what do you um, need? I think <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Um. Okay. So you did mention that um, there are apps to um lay out your post beforehand and yes. I know that Teresa again and you just said that people push and push and push right social media I'm curious how many posts do you think you need to post a week to yeah, engage question. like to engage the whole social media content and push your brand out so the good and bad thing about um social media is that especially specifically Instagram you can't over post they won't let you like you can make the post but they're not going to put it in front of people's feeds unless there's uh, engagement with it. So you can't overdo it, which is good, but then you'd also don't want to misallocate resources and like be posting all this stuff for nothing. Um, but you could post 10 times a day and it wouldn't be too much. So that answers the like too much question. The not enough question, um, like for our clients, we do twice a week. So should it be every day? Yeah, it prob probably should be every day. Um, but uh there's only so much time and money available for those sorts of things. And then on the platforms where like Instagram, Facebook, it doesn't make sense to do that because there is not the organic reach on Instagram as there once was. So you're not going to grow realistically. You aren't going to grow a 10,000 following on Instagram because think about it like real estate, the real estate's already been bought. Everyone's already got the positions, their slices of pie have been distributed amongst the people who got there early. Um, and so you, you are not going to have the organic push out there that you would otherwise Instagram and Facebook are places for ad campaigns. Cause like every other post is an ad anyway, so it might as well be yours. Um, but 
when it comes to like posting regularly, if you were a clinic who was going to do it in house, TikTok and LinkedIn are the places to do it without a doubt. Um, and there, there you should be doing every, every day, daily, daily posts if you can, because the real estate hasn't been grabbed there yet. It's all, it's all for the taking, but now is the part where all the pawns or chess pieces or whatever, are all moving into place. Now is the time to, to grab it. So, um, this 10 and a half million guy, like he's, he's got some pull. Like when he makes a post, a lot of people see it. Are they all going to be potential patients? No, but how many does he need out of 10 and a half million? Like that's a lot of people. He lot. only needs like oh. one, 1%. <laughs> yeah. Like that's, that's, it's crazy. Right. Or maybe he'll go like Dr. Michael Popper route. Like, why do you think she has a TV show and all those things? So I guess the short answer is you can't, you can't do it too much. The purpose of it on places like Instagram and Facebook are more to have an established and um, uh, kept current place for people to land when they either get, you get tagged in something or they search you or, or, or whatever. That's more the purpose of it. Awesome. Okay. Does that make sense? Does that answer your question? It does. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, so model accounts that are doing really well, obviously not everyone's going to be the, the bentist over here, but um, you, you, you could have 500,000 followers if you, if you work at it. Um, and, uh, model clinics that are doing really well in a, in a style that you think is appropriate for you. And then kind of just model success leaves clues. And, um, if you, if you see something that you like, there's probably a reason and, and it's a, a worthwhile way to go. Um, and then keep your eye on the horizon. So that's basically my way of saying, pay attention to TikTok, um, because it's, uh, it's in its infancy and it's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Um, it's the o- only account. Uh, platform aside from Snapchat that um, has uh, grown in viewership. So there's a certain amount of attention and eyeballs. Everybody's got a phone and they've basically taken away eyeballs from Instagram and Facebook and more eyeballs are now on TikTok and uh, we're seeing a slight atrophying of Facebook. Um, and uh, as people are talking to the newest thing and the newest thing, the next newest thing is going to come eventually too. So like it's TikTok now, three years from now, who, who the hell knows, but, but you got to pay attention. Is the gist. So, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all awesome. I really had in mind. Um, yeah. So I guess like Brittany had some good questions, and I guess my question is too is like, so we get all these pages set up, and we get someone to manage them, because now I'm into the operations portion and can give some tips that way. Yeah, so yeah. You got all the pages set up. Yeah. And you figured out what kind of content you want on each platform, because that's going to be different too. You could have a TikTok yeah. page. Yeah. You could have a LinkedIn page. You could have a uh, Instagram. You could have Facebook and Facebook is going to be a different post than, than TikTok, than yeah. Instagram, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And um, one thing, and I don't, you probably follow Gary V or I've heard of Gary. Oh, Vee. of course. Yeah. 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 So he's obviously a big social media kind of guru guy for those who don't know who he is, but um you know, he says like, if you're good at writing, then write. If you're good at videos, then do videos. If you're good at pictures, do pictures like, yeah. and, and just kind of align it with your brand. But like you pick your core values in your brand of your clinic. So what are the three things that you really want your clinic to like scream to the world yeah. and you align everything around that. So yeah. if you're like, you know, well, you really are into cosmetic dentistry or you're really into, um, prosthetic, or you're really into like, whatever it is, peds, whatever you're doing, Mm -hmm. then you gear your media toward those kind of things. Because if they're not getting the brand out of your social media, they're never going to engage with you because they don't know what's going on. They're just like, Oh, I'm a general dentist. Well, we all know that general dentists aren't really general. They're, they're, there's no general dentist out there that's just like, yeah. I do, I'm everything. excellent at everything. Yeah, You're not. Yeah. No one and knows. I like it's, doing everything. Yeah, no. They right. like doing a few things in their yes. general dentistry. And so, yes. um, and in each dentist, if you have more than one, if you're lucky to have associates in your dentistry practice or partners, you can have a, like, this doctor does this. And this doctor does this and the clinic brand is still very whole, but you can push it 
into these kind of smaller bubbles and that helps break it down into better ideas for your social media. Totally. Yeah. Lean lean into your strengths. Yeah, exactly. Because that's all you have. (laughs) Yeah. So you have to make sure that it is um, a hundred percent like what your clinic is because when they land on your page, they should know within, I would say 10 seconds, you literally actually it's seven, it's seven seconds. You have seven seconds to for them to figure out what you're about, yeah. who yeah. you are, and how to contact you. That's it. Right. They need right. to be able to do those three things in seven seconds because that's literally the attention span of this new era of, of social media. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it's true. And 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 uh, and and maybe maybe you don't have strengths in any of those areas, but the task still needs to get done. So you need to find somebody within the clinic who can then take that on for you, because I guarantee you somebody there is social media savvy. Or hundred percent, right? Someone there, yeah. Somebody, somebody, and you know what? I bet you for an extra like dollar an hour, or not even a dollar an hour, to someone who wants to like, I don't know, someone at the clinic who wants to show well, uh, take the young person at the clinic who's interested in in doing something, or like knows TikTok exists and has an account. Be like, hey, could you film? Could we film some videos? Like, could you do that for us? Like, we would really love for you to do that for the clinic. They probably think that's awesome. Yeah, just something. And it's just like different, right? Like it gives them an opportunity to do something different. That's super fun. Um, yeah, like I just think it's really, really like an opportunity. Yeah, um, it for sure is. Sorry, someone's texting me here. So I make sure it wasn't about this group. <laughs> like, yeah, I just think that like we, if you, if you don't have the, um, funds to buy into a marketing program. Like, and I, I, I want to go back to this a little bit because I feel like dentistry is, it's, it's such a weird niche where I think that sometimes we start off these clinics, um, and we have like talented dentists and they're getting off the ground and they're like, they are in the startup mode for the first five years or so, right. They're in startup and they don't really have a huge amount of resources and they have like the office manager wears like 50 hats basically yeah. to do it yeah. there's like one admin there you know and they're the treatment coordinator and the the hygiene coordinator and and yep. we have you know like it's 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 hard in the beginning and you're sure. like oh just one more thing but this one more thing helps build something better down the road it's like a long term plan is foundational and yeah it is it's like one of those core kind of pillars that the clinic is built on and i think Sometimes what happens is dentists like don't get out of the startup phase for a long time. And so it becomes very like, oh, it's not working or this isn't working or whatever. But just as soon as you get out of the startup phase, that's kind of when everything, like you said, kind of clicks into place. And then all of a sudden it builds on itself and it starts to just like go, you know, it's the snowball, you know, it's one patient and then it's two patients and then it's four patients, not a lot, right? Then it's eight patients still not enough 16 right. ugh, we're not making money <laughs> 32 uh-huh, uh-huh, we're uh-huh. still not making money 64 we're like hey we're dying here but then you get to like oh you get to like 130 or whatever like it just doubles doubles and all of a sudden you're in the like whatever like yeah you know hundreds and 20 like 200s 500s a thousands and then all of a sudden you're like oh okay this snowballing effect that happens yes it's all from these little tiny seeds that you've planted and kind of scattered around in your marketing Absolutely. plan. Well, and a good example of that, if I just scale back here to, uh, so Citadel Dental um, is like- the They perfect... have an amazing social yeah, media. Yeah, they're great. And I wish I could take credit for it all, but like, honestly, it's her. She just like, she gets it. She she knows what she wants. She knows what she likes. She does a lot of it, uh, a lot of stuff herself. We provide a, a, a backdrop. Uh, for her to kind of make sure that the, the like the feel of the brand is, is, is there, but it's, she's calling the shots and um, you know, she, she, she just has had her, she's coming up on her first year anniversary of the clinic and they've got almost 2000 patients now and an associate and they had, I forget the exact numbers, but it was like 400 or something like that come over from the old clinic. Yeah. They're doing amazing. And um I hear nothing but good things about them. And, and yep. it's, it's, you, we all know the dental community is very small. Um, it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they, they, they run a really good clinic there and they are, they're doing all the best things as far as like customer service and like keeping their brand and yes. like 
they treat their patients so well. And they're like, yeah, like you can even say it's an all female dental practice in St. Albert. And you look yep. at their brand and we know that St. Albert's a very kind of like more ritzier area as Snooty. far as like fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it is like they're tailoring their whole brand to that mindset yes. because yes. that is their audience and that's who yeah. they want to pull from. And yeah. it's working for them. It's working extremely well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's doing super, super well. And I think that honestly, their their engagement is good. I look at their posts quite a bit. I comment on their posts quite a yeah. bit. But yeah. yeah, it's good. They have lots of good tips. They have lots of um, a nice mix of organic posts. Like I just see a lot yeah. of realism in there. And and that's kind of just it's a beautiful thing. It's, yeah. they've done they've done really well with it and uh they should be very proud of that but that's if you guys are on social media you can go look up their account and like we said it's kind of like you mimic the people that are killing it that's a very yeah. good it's very very smart to do that and you feel like oh i'm copying yeah. but like who cares if it gets no you, it doesn't matter you? whatever no because no one else is comparing except for you like no one else is really following multiple dental accounts it's like my instagram is really weird because i follow like <laughs> I don't know. Mine too. Yeah, right? I like so like 700 in yeah. dental counts. Yeah. But your regular, yeah. your regular person's, that's just not the reality of their, of their feed. Right. So it's only you that's probably going to notice that like something maybe a little bit similar to theirs or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it can be really, really, really great, really powerful. It's worked out exceedingly well for them. We're also gonna be doing a refresh for them right away. So um there's a few things that are just like, you know what? I think we like the, the clinic, we, it knows who the clinic knows who it is. I mean, they always, they always did, but like, we have a better understanding of like who the clinic is. And I think we're going to tweak and modify well, stuff and make it. And that's interesting too. And we'll just kind of, I'll, we'll talk about this topic and then we'll wrap it up because we'll get getting to the end here. But I feel like uh, just because your social media has been run one way doesn't yeah. mean you can't refresh it because that is another thing that happens a lot is people get stuck in their original thought process. And the one thing that I've learned in business, you know, just from all of the stuff that I've been reading and trying to like educate myself on is the market doesn't lie. So if yeah, you yeah, are not yeah. seeing the results that you want, then you got to figure out why and figure out where the market is. And then you got to test the market because you're like, oh, we're going to try this. Did it work? Yeah, we got lots of engagement. Cool. What time did we post? Where did we post? Why, why did that get engagement? Who was engaging with us? Like, those are all things that obviously a marketing company does for us if we right. can hire them. But those, those are your responsibility then to kind of look into and, and kind of see and engage on and and plan accordingly and, and you have those like planning apps and you can plan them to be like oh you get the most engagement at 9 a.m cool great post yeah. out at 9 a.m every day then it's, you're set yeah and every clinic is going to be a little different too right like there's there's going to be some like overall metadata that will apply to all but yeah you're you have to like you said notice what's happening and working for you and then do more of it and do less yeah. of the stuff that isn't yeah, exactly. The market yep. does not lie. The market will lie. tell you. Yeah, the market is your your best friend and your worst enemy because they're brutally yeah. honest, but at so the same honest. time they're they're there and will help you if you just listen. For so, sure. Yeah. Yep. They're, it's they're true. like your best friend. But yeah. best friends are also brutally honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true friends. Yeah, they'll tell you the 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 cold hard facts even if you don't want to hear it. Yeah, exactly. So, yep. um yeah. So thank you so much um, yeah, for, for coming for on. You have so much information and I obviously could talk to you for hours. <laughs> I feel like we also have a problem with the gift of gab, um, yeah. but yeah, you're awesome resource. I know thank you. for us, like just even kind of just watching what you're doing and super easy to reach out to. Um, when we post this, we'll obviously have all of your, um, mm -hmm information out and we'll push this video out obviously in, in a couple of weeks here so that other people that were not able to make it can see it but yep. uh, and tag you and that on our social media as well as our youtube yeah. account yeah. uh and we'll tag you so that you get we'll do all the things that we all the things that we friends. talked about yeah <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah we'll yeah. do it right yeah. um to make sure that you are getting the engagement out of this as well but i know that you guys uh, anybody that's on this or anybody that's in the future listening to this 100 percent uh fix legit and he can help you guys out if you're in that in the need for that marketing experience that he offers because it's 
I know that he does a great job and super easy to understand for some of us who don't kind of grasp it for those pessimists and those optimists kind yeah, of both lays, sides. The, lays the groundwork for us so that we can kind of well, no, I, I appreciate it I was uh I was uh, very grateful to be included and um I'm happy to answer any questions too like down the road or just text me I'm just I'm just a person with a phone it's not some like giant corporate entity like if you have a question <laughs> I'll, I'll answer. It's, it's all, it's all, it's all good. You don't have to be like, I don't have to be on the payroll to like answer questions. Like I'm just a regular person trying to, trying to help. So. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, we really appreciate it. And your genuineness is uh, just awesome. And we, we love having you in our neighborhood. So thank well, you great, for that. Great. And, and feelings part, mutual. Yeah. I'm part of the Edmonton crew. <laughs> yeah. Um, that are, you know, dental obsessed. So um, yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we'll call it a night. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Awesome. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Bye, guys.